A very good evening to all the viewers of yet another Wyrock YKSpedia webinar. On behalf of the Bombay Orthopedic Society, I welcome you all to Wyrock 2019. The conference will be held from December 20th to 22nd at the Renaissance Convention Center in Powai. It's about three weeks that we are away from the conference and on part of the organizing and the scientific committee, I welcome you all and urge you to register and attend this conference. Today we have with us Dr. Mandar Agashe, who is a pediatric orthopedic surgeon attached to the Wadia Children's Hospital, to the SRCC Hospital and the Agashe Pediatric Super Special Open Hospital. And he is going to be speaking to us about a very interesting pediatric fracture, the outliers in supracondylar fractures, what to do if the fracture is irreducible. So I now hand over the proceedings to Dr. Mandar Agashe. Welcome Mandar. Thank you, Shopnil. So, as Swapnil said, we are just three, three weeks away from Wyrock and I hope that all of you have registered for this very exciting conference. Uh, today I will be speaking on something which is, which is always a, a difficult fracture for us, the outlier supracondylars, what to do when we can't reduce them. So, we come to a typical scenario. We have a displaced type 3 supracondylar fracture. Looking at the x-ray, everyone including your OT technician, the anesthetist is absolutely scared. You see that it's a displaced supracondylar humerus fracture. And sometimes you just finish your close reduction and internal fixation in just 15 minutes. You are absolutely thrilled. The anesthetist is absolutely happy that they are able to go to the next case. And you feel like this guy from Sacred Games. You feel like supracondylar skaraja. But sometimes... There, there are some problems. You have a grossly displaced fracture. You are unable to get a close reduction. You are operating at 6 a.m. in a small nursing home with no or very negligible assistance and very poor instrumentation for open reduction for a very small child. Now, what to do? You have to do something daring at that time. And you should think of certain techniques in order to reduce these difficult supracondylars. So in my lecture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe a few percutaneous techniques for reduction of these supracondylar humerus fractures. Now, when we look at problem supracondylar humerus fractures, all of these problem supracondylars are not the same. So when I tried analyzing these fractures, what I felt was there are basically two groups of them. One is the irreducible supracondylar humerus fractures. And second are the unstable supracondylar humerus fractures. In irreducible supracondylar fractures, we need to have a method to achieve reduction. While in unstable supracondylar fractures, we need to have methods to achieve reduction as well as maintain them. So let's look at a few issues, few uh, methods to solve these two different issues. Just to know about what happens in a supracondylar humerus fracture, when the proximal fragment goes anteriorly, the, the, the uh, brachialis muscle is impaled in the fracture site and that prevents reduction. As you can see here, and this is clinically shown by the brachialis sign, which is this much. And in this case, we do something which is known as a joystick method or the intrafocal wire or the intrafocal artery forceps method. So what do you do if you have a fracture like this, which is grossly displaced and you can see that there is gross displacement on the lateral view. You make a small puncture in the, in, in the posterior aspect, in the triceps, pass a small muscular forceps or a small K wire, pass it through the fracture site, reverse the muscular forceps and lever it so that the entire fracture gets reduced. Once you are able to close the anterior gap, you can see it on the lateral view and pass it past a K wire or looking at the lateral view itself. As shown by this illustrative example, you can see that I've used a small K wire. I have joysticks, joystick that proximal fragment across. I have achieved the reduction on the <coughs> lateral view. 
you look at the ap view ap jones view at that time you can see that there is some mal alignment or translation which you correct with manual pressure and then you can fix it in the routine manner in this way so this has been very elaborately described by shaukat et al in current orthopedic practice now what do we do for the unstable supracondylars in unstable supracondylars the 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 reduction is very difficult to achieve and the reduction is very difficult to maintain <coughs> so if you look at this x ray this uh, diagram you can see that there is severe periosteal strippage of all over the fracture site and hence we require a few methods in order to hold the reduction so these methods can hold either the distal humerus itself can help in holding the distal humerus as well as the olecranon on across the elbow joint or they can help to hold the proximal fragment let us look at the indications for each of them option 1 here this is a this is a method which was described for a very unique type of fracture which is a type 4 multi directionally unstable supracondylar humerus fracture now in a fracture supracondylar humerus what happens is that when it is an extension type once you reduce it in flexion it remains stable because the periosteum is intact on the posterior aspect in multi directionally unstable supracondylar humerus fractures what happens is that the periosteum is stripped off completely and that leads to instability in flexion as well as extension in this case a method which was described very well by edward and noise it can be used here what you do is you put a wire through the distal humeral uh, fragment which is parallel to the lateral view you use that as a joystick in order to achieve reduction on the lateral view if when it reduces in the lateral view you see the ap view and then fix it you can see that there is severe amount of displacement on ap and on flexion as well as extension you can see that the wire has been passed the reduction has been achieved on both views and then the fixation has been done in the routine manner let's look at the second way where you can hold the distal humerus as well as the olecranon across the elbow joint so when is this required this is required in a very unique type of uh, supracondylar humerus fracture which is the flexion type supracondylar humerus now what happens in flexion type supracondylar humerus fracture <coughs> is that the reduction is achieved in some amount of extension not in the usual flexion which is seen in in extension type fractures in this case it is very difficult to pass the wire keeping the elbow held in extension and it's a very unstable sort of fracture so what do you do <coughs> you reduct obtain obtain the reduction on the lateral view in 70 degrees of extension you pass a 1.8 mm wire through the olecranon through the distal fragment and through the proximal fragment which is intramedullary you look at only the lateral view you look at the reduction only on the lateral view after which you look at the ap view in in the ap view there may be some amount of translation which is seen which you can easily correct keeping that wire intact through the medullary canal keeping the lateral reduction intact once you do that you then pass wires in a routine manner so that reduction is achieved and maintained so this is the the method of using a trans olecranon wire in unstable flexion type supracondylar humerus the third option is that of achieving some hold in the proximal fragment now this is typically seen when there is a rotationally unstable element in which case there is a very there are very good papers which have described manipulation of the proximal fragment <coughs> all these uh, papers describe the manipulation of the proximal fragment in order to achieve correction of the rotational mal alignment what do they do basically you pass a wire transversely through the proximal segment you hold it and lever it out so that the the rotational mal alignment is changed, corrected and keeping that uh, wire levered so that the rotational mal alignment is corrected 
you pass two wires in the routine manner this video has been very beautifully done by dr venkat das my friend and colleague from from ganga hospital you can see that there is significant amount of rotational mal alignment what he has done is passed a wire which is a transverse wire he has helped used it to liver it in correct position passed the wire in the lateral view seen that the ap view reduction is achieved and fixation done in the usual manner a small corollary is that you should you should see that this wire is not too proximal only about 4 to 5 cm proximal to the lateral epicondyle otherwise there is a danger to the radial nerve as it crosses from posterior to anterior thus just to reiterate in this section we can have if there is coronal and sagittal plane alignment you help in manipulation of the distal fragment either just the distal humerus or the distal humerus and the olecranon <coughs> or if there is rotational mal alignment you you can be helped by manipulating the proximal fragment in order to match the distal fragment thus finally to reiterate we have the irreducible supracondylars and we have the unstable supracondylars in irreducible supracondylars we have to have a method to achieve reduction in unstable supracondylars you have to have methods to achieve and maintain reduction so if you are unable to get an absolute reduction on the lateral view itself you can use intrafocal wires or hemostat in order to achieve that reduction in unstable fractures see whether it is coronal or sagittal plane mal alignment in which case you may have to manipulate the distal fragment only or the distal fragment and the olecranon uh, in case of flexion supracondylars and if there is rotational mal alignment you have to manipulate the proximal fragment in order to to match the distal fragment and then achieve reduction thank you so much thank you very much indeed bandar that was an eye opener fantastic presentation as usual and uh, i would again urge the viewers of this webinar to kindly come register and attend this fantastic extravaganza which is going to be academic as well as there is going to be a warm fellowship in the evenings thank you very much dr mandar agashe and uh, thank you for contributing your time and uh, see you at wirock thank you sapnil excellently done thank you so much